hey everyone so welcome to this series and in this series i'm aiming towards creating an email client and this series would be divided in parts and this is the first video of this series uh, in this video so what i'm planning to do is actually connect with gmail apis and uh, get all the gmail apis that i actually need to use and also inspect all the gmail apis in insomnia so to do that what we are going to cover today is how to create a project in Google Developer Console, how to enable Gmail APIs for that particular project, how to create auth to tokens and how to credentials for that uh, project, you know, and then how to inspect APIs. So let's get started. Uh, to start with the first thing we are going to do is uh, let's go to console.developer.google.com and this is my dashboard. Uh, you see some of the projects which I actually created before. Uh, let's just click that and create a new project. So I'll just do, sorry, yeah, let's do create project. And uh, let's create this one as email client YouTube. Uh, let's just, so this is my personal account. I'm not creating any organization. Let's just keep it like that for now. Uh, but for you, yeah, you can always create organization to sort your projects better with the billing and stuff. Yeah. So let it create the project and awesome. So the project is created and on top left, you would see this drop down. Make sure the particular project has been selected. So I've selected email client to uh, YouTube. So that's up and running. And so currently this project has none APIs enabled. So let's enable few API, enable the Gmail APIs. Uh, let's go to APIs and search for Gmail here. So you would actually see Gmail API flexible restful access to user inbox. Let's click this one and enable it. So now once the API is enabled, uh, you would actually see that API stuff here. Uh, we can come to credentials, but instance, let's go and first actually, you know, uh, complete our content screen. So on your project, click on this hamburger menu, navigation menu, apps, APIs and services, go to OAuth consent screen. So we are going to use this API using OAuth. Uh, so use type internal and external. Let's select external for now and create. Now let's just give our application name. So email client tutorial. Yeah, uh, let's skip the app logo for now. Uh, this bit is important, the scopes in Google API. So Auth has a concept of, Auth2 has a concept of scopes where uh, you know, instead of giving access to all the APIs, once you're authorized, uh, we actually create scopes. And for example, you can say, uh, for example, the scope here is email. So this would actually mean users can only read the user's emails and nothing else, even if they authorize after that, and they cannot use their, you know, other stuff like their emails and stuff. You need a special authorization for that. So let's add a scope. And after Gmail API is enabled, these are the scope, all the scopes which are available to us. Uh, let's add a scope of mail.com. So this is like the highest scope in email kind of thing. So you can actually read, compose, send, and permanent delete all the emails from your Gmail. This is the one we need. So let's enable this one and add. So once it's added, let's just make sure it's there and save. So once it's saved, we are all set. Now let's go to credentials. So in case of OAuth, so there's a concept of a client resource owner, resource owner is the user who's actually using the app. Client would be us, our application, and resource server would be the Google. So it's, it hosts all the information and even authorization servers by Google. So let's go ahead and create some credentials using which we would actually authenticate our client and users would actually give 
authorization to certain scopes for our client so let's create client credentials auth client id uh, application type web application uh, let's just give this name insomnia insomnia client so and so authorized redirect url is very important so uh, the way it works is when when we ask user to log in or authenticate they would be redirected to the google's uh, authorization screen where they would actually allow scopes and once they allow scopes uh google would actually redirect us back to our application url with the access token so or, or authorization grant token sorry so that's really important so uh since we don't have anything yet let's just add here https uh, example oh, let's do local host 8080 for now and create so it's created this is our client id and this is the client secret let's just take a note of it and if you're watching this video don't bother about you know taking this uh, client id client secret and try to hack the project because i will actually delete this project after this video so yeah for the next video we'll create a new project and make sure the client id and client secret is new or yeah i would actually rather just delete this client secret and client id so let's click ok and uh, we are ready to go so our google project is ready so now to get started with insomnia let's open an insomnia instance it's here and in insomnia let's create a new folder uh, let's call it uh, email client uh, app yeah cool so once it's created let's go here and let's create a new request and this request would be actual authorization request using which we would actually get the uh, access token okay so the way it works is if you look at the insomnia api so we've got the api path where we actually add the our api uh but there's also body auth query header and docs so let's go to auth now and auth is really good it can actually help us get the auth tokens so let's go and select auth 2.0 so authorization url um we can find these uh for google the authorization url is this i'll put this in our uh, description you can access from there and this is the access token url and we would actually need client id and the client secret and we would need to give the uh redirect url we want this api to be, we want this to be redirected to and we need to make sure this is actually authorized redirect url in the constant screen we just configured a couple of minutes ago and scope so scope is an important one so whenever we are authorizing we don't get access to all the scopes we actually need to define what all scopes we are asking access to and in this case the request of scope is actually a string with space separated scopes so let's go back here and you know, let's keep them side by side so scopes so now if we go to our content screen and look at all the scopes we asked for i'll just go here i was the email scope which i need so let's get this one so this is the scope we need and what would actually happen if you want more resources you would just space separate and try what are the other scopes you need so that's all and we have it ready now if we click on fetch token so oh okay so redirect uri mismatch so the redirect url we gave http localhost 8080 there's a mismatch uh let's close it and go to our credentials open our credentials and okay i gave https localhost so let's just make it http and save Conf perfect 
let's fetch the tokens now so uh, i actually came to the this uh, OAuth screen from google let's select this account as my user account redirecting so these are all the permission it's allowed so this is the app name email client tutorial read compose permit delete all the emails from gmail associate your personal phone with google and your email address so these are the scopes i asked i'll just allow awesome <coughs> sorry about that so we have got this access token and this access token actually contains all the information we need to actually you know get the user details so for this user <laughs> So uh, Insomnia has a really good concept of environments where you can actually create, you know, credentials and stuff. So I've created an, a new environment called new email client so that, you know, the other credentials are not shown. Let's go here. Oh, I need to actually add so uh, new email client and let's add the access token here. Yeah, so we have got the access token. Yeah, that looks good. Done. So we are in this thing. Authorization. Now let's create a new request. And list messages. Yeah, so in this we would actually get all the threads and the list of messages. So what we can actually do here is uh, go to library search the gmail stuff again uh should have could have done earlier so in this we have got this tutorials and documentation let's click learn more uh documentation is really good by the way it's like it's really good so if we go to like this is i've already read this let's go to api overview now in api overview we have got all the apis uh, references yeah so let's come to references sorry yeah so user dot messages and let's list all the messages okay so this requires authentication and the api is uh google apis.com gmail and this api so let's just copy this api and the thing about gmail apis is, is user id you can just type me so what this would do is it will access the authentication for you know the logged in user now now the auth path we can actually go to the token so we have got the token so let's select the bearer token path, uh, authentication and in token we would actually pass in our token so oh, oh okay so uh, I kept the access token in uh, environment variable so selected new and I can just type access token uh, not sure why it oh my previous one was from no environment i should have fixed that uh anyhow i'll delete those credentials also but the ones which i just created so let's send and got all the messages all the threads now if you want to really see any of those threads we can actually go here and message id so let's just create uh see message and we can actually get the message from here so user id slash message id uh let's call this api uh, let's keep user id as me and let's look at my last email oh, i think the last email is from google that i created credentials but yeah let's do that so this thing again ought would be the bidder token and in here we would actually give the access token the one which we just created and send so we have got the whole email here is the whole re response from the email and so it's base 64 encrypted and one of the things we can actually see here is so body let's just get grab this one base 64decode.org get this decode and copy the html which is there and 
we can actually go to js fiddle yeah uh, I just fiddle for JavaScript, but yeah, it has HTML also. So let's just push HTML out there and paste. So yeah, so this is a email I got the last one, which was grant and email and check activity. So yeah, uh, we have access to, we have seen how to access Gmail APIs and it looks good. Cool. So yeah, uh, in the next tutorial, we would actually see how to, uh, you know, configure this with a, a node client, uh, sorry, node server using passport JS, how to actually create sessions. And so that, you know, on server we can read and we can uh, give our own features like, you know, sorting the emails with some logic. Uh, I want to say AI machine learning kind of stuff, but Maybe not that, but you know, more like uh, our own features so that people are actually using our email client. So let's catch you up in the next tutorial. See ya. Bye.